Ukraine still under attack tonight. Russian forces launching a full-scale invasion about 24 hours ago. More than 100 Ukrainian soldiers and civilians have been killed. Hundreds more have been wounded. And tonight, those forces are reportedly closing in on the capital of Kyiv. U.S. and European leaders are punishing Russia with financial sanctions, but that's not slowing the assault. WGN's Mike Lowe following this developing crisis for us tonight. Mike? And good evening to both of you. There are reports of fierce fighting across Ukraine, with President Volodymyr Zelensky saying the Russians plan to, quote, liquidate him. And further reports saying that all male citizens aged between 18 and 60 are banned from leaving the country. But tonight, British intelligence has released this assessment, quote, it is unlikely that Russia has achieved its planned day one military objectives. As Russia's full-scale military attack on Ukraine continues tonight, the president of Ukraine is reporting that at least 137 soldiers and civilians have been killed and hundreds of others have been wounded. The United Nations says at least 100,000 people have fled the capital, Kyiv. And you know, all friends, everybody, everybody is, uh, is in Kyiv now and they are calling us and telling what is going on and it's, and it's awful. This is video shared with WGN News from a woman with family in Chicago. She's seeking protection from the assault in a bomb shelter. And a disturbing development tonight. Russian forces have seized the shuttered Chernobyl complex. The White House said there are, quote, credible reports that the staff working at the site of the world's worst nuclear disaster have been taken hostage by Russian troops. We condemn it and we request their release. Earlier, President Joe Biden condemned the Russian invasion and Vladimir Putin. Putin is the aggressor. Putin chose this war. And now he and his country will bear the consequences. The United States has imposed crippling sanctions on Russia that cut the access of Russia's largest banks and companies from financial markets, restrict exports of technology to Russia, and freeze trillions of dollars in Russian assets, including those of Russia's elite wealthy families. These are people who personally gain from the Kremlin's policies, and they should share in the pain. The president said the U.S. would not deploy the military to engage Russians in Ukraine, but he ordered 7,000 troops to Europe to reassure NATO allies that the U.S. would fight if the Russians advance into NATO territory. As I made crystal clear, the United States will defend every inch of NATO territory with the full force of American power. There's always that danger that this could uh, branch out from an invasion of Ukraine, and by accident or design, Putin could enlarge the conflict. Uh, and they're especially vulnerable countries. Senator Dick Durbin returned to Chicago today after visiting Illinois soldiers at a NATO base in Lithuania. Yeah, I'm thinking of the folks with so many friends in Poland, in Lithuania, Latvia, who live in the Chicago, Chicago area. They're definitely worried about their families and should be. Durbin says he fully supports the president's strategy of sanctions and of keeping the U.S. out of a ground war in Ukraine. Vice President Kamala Harris said Putin is to blame. We know and believe that this is a war of choice. And Putin defended the invasion, saying he was protecting Russia. He threatened any entity that would stand in his way with consequences that the world has never seen, which was interpreted by many as a veiled nuclear threat. America stands up to bullies. We stand up for freedom. This is who we are. And tonight, Ukrainian officials are asking NATO to do more to repel Russia's aggression, saying sanctions won't be enough. Back to you. Thank you, Mike.